I can imagine, certainly not today or tomorrow, but one day, AirPods that contain a W5 or some other alphanumeric chipset that slip into our ears and, through a combination of gestures and Siri, or better yet, Siri OS... You know what to do. The clean slate protocol, sir? It's screwed. It's Christmas. Yes. Yes. ...can stream music, podcasts, and audiobooks straight from the clouds and into our ears. Yeah. Apple deleted the 3.5mm audio jack and introduced AirPods, tiny little ear computers in the making, disguised as wireless headphones. They have gone on to become a breakout success and one of Apple's best new products in years. And the memes. So many. So great. And I have a sneaky suspicion they're only really just getting started. Welcome back. Glad to see you again. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Now, I've already made a video rounding up all the rumors around the AirPods 2 and the near future of the product in general. Been there, we'll link below that. What I want to talk about now is a future for AirPods that's not quite so near, but I very much hope is coming as absolutely soon as possible. A long time ago, but not really so very far away, we had mainframes in our offices and we had to drive there to do everything. Then we got home PCs, and while they couldn't do everything the mainframes could do, at least not at first, they could do enough critical things to save us from having to drive all the way to the office all the time. Then we got phones, and the same deal. Couldn't do everything the PC could, but could do enough important things everywhere to save us having to run back to our PCs to do everything. Now we have watches, and again, they can't do as much as our phones, but they can do a few things conveniently enough that we don't even have to reach for our phones if we're walking around the house or office or running around or swimming outside. Clocks went from town squares to living rooms to pockets to wrists, and so too now have computers. But watches never went into our ears, and computers, well, <laughs> they already have. Alongside AirPods, Apple introduced W1, a wireless chip designed by Johnny Saruji's Platform Technologies Org, the same team that makes the A-series chipsets for iPhone and iPad, S-series for Apple Watch, T-series for Macs, and the list increasingly goes on and on. W1 is what lets AirPods not just pair so elegantly with iOS, but sync so damn near flawlessly with each other. They're literally tiny audio computers around which all the other sensors and components of the AirPods depend. Apple has also made a W2 chip. Rather than second generation silicon for AirPods, it was made for the Apple Watch 3. Its job wasn't pairing and syncing though, it was to make wireless as fast and power efficient as possible, which was good because 3 was when the watch got the option for LTE. Of course, W doesn't touch cellular, at least not yet. Apple, to the surprise of absolutely no one, has also been working on cellular modems for a few years already. Just last week, Reuters reported that Apple had moved engineering responsibility for the technology from Dan Riccio's hardware organization to, you guessed it, Johnny Saruji's silicon team. That's for iPhone, because of course it's for iPhone. Everything is for iPhone, for now. But Apple never innovates in a silo. What starts with iPhone will inevitably spread across the line. Maybe, one day, even into AirPods. Once upon a time, Apple made iPods. But then came iPhone, not really to obsolete them, but to converge them. Steve Jobs even introduced it exactly that way. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. It connected to iTunes like an iPod. It even had an app called iPod for the first few years until the name was switched to music. Traditional iPods lingered for a while but ultimately faded away, one by one. RIP. But the iPhone, especially as it got big and bigger, wasn't really suited to be just an iPod, at least not for everyone all the time. So when it was introduced, and increasingly as it has evolved, Apple Watch began to be called the new iPod. Maybe more specifically, the new Nano. It just came with its own strap, built right in. It's apt, because with the addition of even limited LTE, and you knew this was coming, AirPods, Apple Watch has become the very model of a modern media iPod. Rather than transferring from iTunes over a hardwire though, it streams straight from Apple Music. And this is all only four years later. Imagine another four, imagine 10. The Apple Watch could one day become our iPhone. And then what would become our Apple Watch? <laughs> AirPods. The type of technology needed to turn AirPods into full-on wearable computers is, right now, the stuff of sci-fi. But so were the current AirPods just a few years ago, and Apple Watch just a few years before that. Getting a modem small enough to fit into something AirPod-like will take just the kind of miracle we've become all too accustomed to seeing from Johnny Saruji's team. Getting a battery that can handle powering the modem and the mic and the speakers for any appreciable amount of time, well, that'll take an even bigger, or rather smaller, miracle. But time and effort solves for so many things. 
I can imagine, certainly not today or tomorrow, but one day, AirPods that contain a W5 or some other alphanumeric chipset that slip into our ears and, through a combination of gestures and Siri, or better yet, Siri OS, can stream music, podcasts, and audiobooks straight from the clouds and into our ears. And a day or a few days after that, when they can not only read to you all your messages and mail, send them for you, add all your reminders and appointments, but stream full-on audio, augmented reality as well for everything from turn-by-turn -turn mapping directions to interactive fitness workouts. Yeah, first like iPods, then like her, like Jarvis. Our phones are already external cybernetics. Our watches, wearable Borg tech. Our pods are the next most minimized, most proximate step, at least until things stop being so external. But that's how the future happens, bit by bit, day by day, including making ourselves smarter with Brilliant. In just five minutes a day, Brilliant provides you with the context and frameworks that you need to tackle a specific problem. Could be code, logic, neural networks, machine learning, math, whatever. The important thing is that you learn the concepts by applying them. If you like the problem and want to learn more, there's a course quiz that explores the same concept in greater detail. These thought-provoking challenges, they lead you from curiosity to mastery, one day at a time, in no time. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off the annual subscription to view all the problems in the archives. So what are you waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash vector and finish your day smarter every day. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. I know it feels like the future is always coming, but never quite arriving. That's because any time we get something, we tend to immediately want what's next. If you step back from the next product, you can see the path of many future products stretching out in front of us to the horizon. This is what I'm stepping back and seeing with AirPods, at least until... <laughs> Well, no, wait, that's a topic for a future video. For now, I really want to know what you think. Could AirPods become the next iPods or more? And if so, how long do you think it will take? Five years? 10? Never? <laughs> hit like, hit subscribe. It really helps the show. And then hit up the comments and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.